What's up? This is Philly versus Everybody, episode 130. Red October is here. 11 more to go, Topper. The Eagles played a football game. Temple's own Todd Bowles is our daddy. And two Philly legends went to sports heaven. Mountain Mahas. <laughs> this is Philly versus Everybody. I'm JT. I'm John. I'm Joe. Okay, welcome back to Philly versus Everybody, ladies and gentlemen. We're happy to have you here. Happy to be back, folks. It's myself, JT. We got John. We got Joe. And we're very excited to start the podcast by announcing... Big, 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 big news. Big news, ladies and gentlemen. Big news. Take us away, JT. Philly versus Everybody is officially part of the Heat Ratio Sports Podcast Network. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go. Shout out to Tony and everybody over there. We're very excited to be here. We're very excited to be coming to you guys every week with the latest Philly sports and other sports drama, news, culture. We got it. You want it? We got it, folks. The podcast will be in your same normal feed, but you can also find it on YouTube on the Heat Ratio Sports YouTube channel. Yeah, we're bringing an edgy but respectful (laughs) content (laughs) strategy to Philly sports. We're working on the respect, folks. Couldn't possibly be a better descriptor than edgy but respectful. We're working on the latter part of that we're good at the edge <laughs> the edge we got well, we got it we never lost the edge today on the pot the phils are in the postseason but october is here who's Hell the yeah. biggest threat in the national league to us going back to the world series the birds is it time to lower expectations on this season who's to blame pete rose he's dead does that mean he should be in the hall of fame and joe gets a hockey minute to talk about our favorite russian or all four of them. It'd be tough if to fit all four in a minute, though. Yeah. You well, really we're going to see. Yeah, I don't know if I can get all four Hopefully of them. Hopefully, you can in a get minute. Mitchkov in, though. <laughs> we're going to see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Philadelphia Phillies finished the regular season 95 and 67, the best record since 2011, conveniently also the last time that we won the NL East division title. And we're here, folks. We got postseason baseball. It's so nice seeing these Braves play in a uh, wild card series on the road. Yep. After years of them losing the division, I hate them. I just hate them. Right now, as they're listening, bottom five, three nothing Padres. Let's go, Friars, baby. We'll see you in the NLCS. But um, yes, Phillies. Phillies will begin this weekend, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, they're playing at four Eastern, one Pacific, both days. That's right. Home games against either the Mets or Brewers. Whoever wins that series. Red, red, October, October, October is coming to a house. Today, Mets took game one of that series, but uh, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk some, about that. Uh, what I called the uh, the double hater. Because as Philly sports fans, we were watching the Braves and the Mets play, and it's like, all right, who do we want to make the postseason less? The answer is the Diamondbacks. <laughs> How's that couch feel, the ladies and gentlemen? D-Cracks fans on Twitter I are losers. beside themselves. I love how fluke of last year's World Series was neither team made it back. <laughs> losers. Neither team. Losers. And the Rangers were really bad. They losers. were sub-500. They, were they even 500? No, they were they had like seventy something wins. Awful. Oh yeah, no, the Rangers had a really bad season. But um Wait, go wait, real quick, going back to the double hater. Yeah. Um, did you guys see the video after the second game where both the Mets and Braves were congratulating each other? Yeah, they were on the field being like, together. Ooh. How lame is that? You guys are supposed to hate the each other. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it was sort of in the bag from the beginning there where it's like If they split the series, then obviously they both go. I'm not saying that there was like a collusive effort there, but it's like I'll say it. There probably was. They were Mets were hardly fucking trying in that second game. Well, because they They didn't gave it to them. They pulled Severino. Who they got a fucking Braves got a fucking handout to the playoffs. Well, they're about to get a hand in shoved up their ass by uh, (laughs) the Padres. By the Padres. (laughs) I just want to say to Zach Gallen and the entire Arizona Diamondbacks organization from the bottom of my heart. Please enjoy your offseason because you all earned it, you fucking loser bastards. Snake's Remember, dead. After they beat us in the NLCS last year, Zach Gallon was tweeting, like, Philly's spring training tickets. Make sure you get your tickets for the next game. Zach Gallon, you're a bum. And guess what, Diamondbacks? All you could do was watch. All you could do was watch as your postseason chances were flushed down the toilet by two better squads because you guys couldn't close out the season. But you know, Losers! You know what? 
those squads aren't as good as the Phillies because they didn't win the division. It's true. But, but so just yesterday... We keep the receipts, you D-cracks fucks. I couldn't focus on work. I couldn't focus on anything because I was just hating so much. I was just full of hate. The hate was flowing through him, hate, folks. Hate, 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 hate. Hater of the year. Anyway, Player hater's ball. Anyway, as we all knew... Anakin Skywalker over here. As we all knew, the Diamondbacks are poverty. Okay? But that first game, Mets, Braves, I got something for you. <laughs> I don't know if either of you guys watched any of the highlights, but... They, they were just trading blows. At the top of the eighth inning, the Braves had a 93.5% chance of winning the game. At the bottom of the eighth inning, the Mets had a 92% chance to win. In the top of the ninth inning, the Braves had a 91% chance to win, and they lost the game. <laughs> you know, they post that, like, win probability thing from ESPN. It's yeah. like, wee! Yeah, it was like somebody's heart yeah. meter. Oh, yeah. Someone was like, biggest we of the season. <laughs> I just remember being like, I, I was literally on Twitter like, lol barves, lol barves. And then lol I was Mets. Like, yeah. Lol Mets, lol Mets, lol barves, lol barves. <laughs> so, the hate was flowing. And then at the end of the day, it was lol d -crack. Yes, which is really what we need. Because, you know, Mets, Mets and Braves both losing in the playoffs would be great. Imagine being a poverty organization, winning a fluke pennant. And then not making the postseason the very next year. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be us. Except we never won a fluke pennant because we're actually good. Anyway, but just as an objective fan of baseball, that game was awesome. Like, that's literally one of the best baseball games I've seen this whole season. Unfortunately, it'll be, well, fortunately, it'll be both of those teams' World Series for the year because neither one of them are going anywhere in the fucking playoffs. Yeah. Hang the banner. You snuck into the wild card. Yeah. Congrats. Um. All right, so but obviously we secured the buy, not the first uh, seed, unfortunately, because we couldn't take care of the Nationals. Kind of faltered there at the end, but it's in the past. Not a huge deal. Like I said, best season since 2011, division crown. Get some time off, get things right. Let's look ahead. Get healthy. So, that's right. Get healthy. Give guys a rest. I do like that from the sense of like people like Bryce who never want to take a day off. At least they get. Uh, yep. They it's force like, days off. Yeah, you. It's good for guys dummies, like JT. Like, just chill out for a minute. Especially, yeah, especially Bryce Harper. All right, so these Braves are playing the Padres. 3 nothing Padres top six. The winner of this series will play the Dodgers. The Mets won game one against the Brewers today. I think it was 8-5. Pretty, I'm not going to call it's it. In, it's in Milwaukee, right? I'm not going to call it. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's not a statement yeah, win, but I was surprised. I'm not surprised that the Braves are a little out of gas after yesterday. But the Mets, man, the Mets are like, oh, no, uh, we're full of piss and vinegar. We're going to win that game. Yeah, it sucks. Most of those games happened during work. I couldn't watch today. So if we're looking at the National League, and we're thinking about the Phils and our road back to the World Series, who do we think is the biggest threat to our chances of returning to the October to the Fall Classic? John, thoughts? Um, as things stand right now, probably, unfortunately, it is the Mets. Um they're just really playing well right now. They've been beating us recently. I did see a stat though that these were seven and nine against the Mets or something like that, or seven and six. I don't know. But three of the losses were Taiwan Walker's fault, so at least we don't have to worry about that. But <laughs> assuming the Mets do make it to, I guess it'd be the what NL, uh, NLDS. No, the NLDS. Yeah, I think we can beat them, but they would be the team I want to see the least. Uh, like the Dodgers and the NLCS doesn't really scare me. Neither would the Padres. Dodgers don't have any pitching. We own the Padres. Oh Bre yeah. Brewers are just like whatever. I don't. I mean, I think they're good, but they again don't scare me. Yeah. And the Braves, we always play tough, and we've beaten them the last two years in the playoffs. So again, not afraid. And the of Braves them. are injured as hell too. Yeah, and the Mets, like you said, full of piss and vinegar. And ever since Grimace threw out that goddamn first pitch, they're just like, yeah, we play six hundred ball now. They're. They're playing really well. They're hot. And as we all know, momentum is big in the postseason. Just look at the aforementioned D-cracks from last year. And the Rangers. Yeah. yeah, I agree with John. Mets are, Mets are the hottest team right now. Um, they're probably our biggest threat. The Padres we beat in the playoffs, what is it, twice now already? And the Dodgers, they always crumble in, in the playoffs. Well, they have no the pitching either right now. chip was during the, the Asterix year anyway, so. Yeah, I oh, there's six, the biggest, uh, sixty biggest game season that does definitely does not count as a real World Series. Oh yeah, nobody respects yeah. that Mickey Mouse chip. That said, and I don't think the Braves are going to win their series or beat the next if they get if they get through to the DS. If we get somehow get a Mets Braves DS CS and a World Cha World Championship on top of that, 
That might be like the best script of all time. I think they have to then close the NL East, start a new division entirely, and just call it something else. <laughs> Same teams, just can't call it the NL East because we. Well, yeah, then- because these fucking bitch ass Mets and Braves uh, teams are like fucking all buddy buddy after their doubleheader. Yeah, we like, will, are you even rivals or what? Why will, do you like each other? We will have literally won the division. We would have beaten both teams and then Ridiculous. won the World Series. I, I think it would be hilarious if the Barbs, you know, beat the Padres, which they're probably not supposed to do in this wild card series, and then they would go on and face the Dodgers, who are like the Dodgers. They're like supposedly a juggernaut in the NL. Beat them, and then they're like, great. We had this terrible season. We were injured. We barely got into the postseason. Now we're hot. We're on a run. We're in the NLCS. And guess who's waiting for you? And then Georgia's <laughs> own. The Phillies. Georgia's own Zach Wheeler's like, nah. And we're just like frothing at the mouth. We're like, give Phoebe brave. Phoebe's <laughs> Atlanta brave. And all of a sudden, Chris Sale gets fucking back spasms. Phoebe brave. That bitch. It's fucked up. He missed like eight months of the year because he was afraid of the yeah, Phillies. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy <laughs> that he's such a coward and he let back spasms get in the way of his ERA getting blown up. Zach Wheeler should be crazy. How he missed he fifteen months of the season. More innings. <laughs> Fuck yourself. I hope Wheeler wins because of those last few games. I don't know if he will, but I hope he does. I do, I agree with you, Joe. I think that script would be great if we saw the bars in the NLCS. It'd be because you know they're trying to do twenty twenty one again, where they barely made the playoffs. And they're like, no, no, we can pull together. And then we're just like, <laughs> hey nope. guys, <laughs> still got Us your number, again. idiot. <laughs> still own you, fuckers. Remember me. <laughs> I think the Mets are definitely the hottest team in the NL going into the postseason. I that do, can all change. In a- I do think we can beat them, but I legitimately think our biggest threat is the Dodgers simply because they can score. You know, they have Shohei Otani who can give you 10 RBIs in a game. Him, Mookie, Freddie. I think Otani was 0 for against the Phillies this year, though, or think, had one hit or something. It was something like that, yeah. Strom owns him. <sighs> I just think that the Dodgers can put up enough runs. Like, knocking on wood here, but the Phillies' problem at, in the past has been like, we're really good, and then the offense is like, ooh, we forgot that we're playing today. You just, you just can't like have one... a three-game stretch where the offense doesn't show up. Yeah, I mean, that shit's really annoying. And like a team like the Braves or the Padres to a lesser extent, but some of these other teams like the Brewers, it's like, all right, we can... Our pitching, our bullpen is good enough. We can probably hold them down. But the Dodgers, if they decide they want to give you eight or nine runs, that's what they're doing. And we got to keep pace with them. And I think we can, but the Dodgers might not even make the NLCS, man. They might lose to one of these two teams. We've won the season series with the Dodgers. We can play against them and beat them. And as you mentioned, we own the Padres. And the Padres, they're just not built like that. I mean, they have Tatis, and they have Lindor, and they've looked good. And yeah, now they, they have, obviously have been good, but I just don't really have faith. I think we saw it in person a couple of years ago. Their whole thing was, well, we beat the Dodgers. We don't care if we lose to you. It's like, oh yeah, what kind of city is this? <laughs> when we, <laughs> for any new listeners, when John and I were in Petco Park in 2022 at an NLCS <laughs> the game. The one NLCS game the Phillies lost. Yeah. It's a, yeah. But I was walking out of there giving double birds to everybody. We've got two chips. And they got none. Making fun of them. They, they just were like laughing like, this guy's funny. We beat the Dodgers. That's all that matters. We're just having a great time. Literally, in- people told me and JT, we beat the Dodgers. That's what matters to us. They literally said, that is our World Series. And I was like, yeah, but you guys understand that you're like... Still playing for the World Series. Playing for the real World Series, <laughs> which you've never won as a franchise. Only been two twice. How good is Luis Arias? Yeah, it's Arias, very though? much a, uh, well, if the Padres lose, we can still go to the beach type of fan base. Yeah. How good is Luis Arias? Well, though? like I pointed out in our text, good. text thread today, he's the first guy to win three straight batting titles on three different teams. He Twins, in, Marlins, and Padres. In 2022, he robbed Aaron Judge of the Triple Crown, and this year he robbed Shohei Otani of the Triple Crown. So I got to say, hats off to you, Mr. Arias. Robbed or those guys just need to hit You're better? doing God's work. Ooh. There's a take. <laughs> Hit better. Hit better, Chief. Yeah, Mr. 50-50 and 60, what was that, 62 home runs the other year with Judge? Yeah. Oh, Hit, sorry, Hit guys. better. Yeah, do better, sorry. <laughs> well, Orias has like three home runs because he has no power. Um, In the American League, the Tigers, man, the Tigers. I'm happy for them. Talk yes. about hot. They beat the Astros, A-double-S Tros. Um, Astros are cooked. I saw. I know it's this over. doesn't really matter because he's old as shit. But they love Verlander off the 
roster for yep. the wild card series. Because he sucks. Yep. Tigers are good, man. They they didn't sneak into Tigers, the playoffs. They won like a shit Tigers ton of games, needed. and they deserved their spot, and they deserved that win today. I watched the game. It was good. Tigers needed to take game one because Scooball was pitching out of his freaking mind. Yeah, he'll and, be the uh, Cy Young. If they didn't take the game AL. one, they would have got swept. Uh, but now they have some momentum, so who knows what can happen in that series. You know why they're winning? Because they got proven winners like Matt Veerling from the Phillies That's right. on yeah. their team. <laughs> Matt Veerling. Batting, batting leadoff and had a home run today. He's didn't he? been good for them. I, that trade actually worked out pretty well because obviously we know Cody Clemens is a uh, podcast favorite here, especially for JT. <laughs> missing piece, hashtag missing piece. Right. And Soto, while he was here, served a purpose, and now he can go melt down in Baltimore, who also lost today to the Royals 1 0. That's right. The Royals. Woof. Yeah, that was a hell of a game. That was a tight one. One nothing. Oh, wait. This isn't really super important, but Joe, I got a quick piece of trivia. Do you know who the starting... He might have been the right fielder at the time for the Tigers was the last time they played in the postseason before today? Nick Castellanos? No, I think he was on that team, though. It was uh, Torrey Hunter. Ooh. They had Torrey one Hunter, since 20... 20- like, like, aged Torrey Hunter moved yeah, from center after, field? Yeah, after Angels, okay. Torrey Hunter. I like Torrey Hunter back in the day. Yeah, but they, they hadn't been since 2014. They hadn't won since 2013. That's a really old name. Yeah. Yeah, good for the Tigers. They, I mean, that, Yeah, good for the Tigers. Yeah. Just think of Detroit. They've got the Lions playing right. really well. I, they got the Tigers. Yeah. And then they look at the basketball court and they're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> We can't well, keep a coach. I mean, Cade Cunningham's not that good. And then their dumb owner the just city, bought into the Chargers, of course. <laughs> the condition of the city aside, I was at that Tigers game earlier this season. Maybe I put a little magic on that team. Who knows? Because uh, that's around when they started their little run. Um, yeah, no, I mean, you know, the, the, the teams are, I mean, aside from the Pistons, pretty good. They've got nothing to complain about out there except for the condition of their city. They have a hockey team? Yeah, the Red Wings. Oh, right. Yeah, Who Red historically Wings, but... are very good, but I think they suck right now. Yeah, they're not, they're not very good right now. Um. Yeah, no, the Tigers can make a legitimate run because the winner of that series goes to play with the Guardians. And the Guardians are kind of the the brewers of the AL. Like, they're good, but nobody's like, ooh, nobody's like shaking in their boots because of the Guardians. Right, they have right. their one superstar with Ramirez and a bunch of, like, good guys around him. They put together a good season, but, you know. They're the Guardians. The Tigers come in there and they're like, oh, they'd, they'd we're going to the get, AL. They'd have to get hot. They're a team that would have to get hot to win. We're going to the ALCS, yes, thanks. Yeah, Royals, Orioles. The Orioles, you know... I fear the Orioles are going to do what they did last year and just flame out again. They're still a young team. Yep. They had a great season. They're a young team. So, you know, but so are the Royals. I don't know. The winner of that series plays the Yankees, and they're probably losing to the Yankees because <laughs> the Yankees are the Yankees. If we see, I mean, yeah, you know, a Royals-Yankees ALCS would be really good. Imagine, like, the Tigers. Like, just the Tigers go on some crazy run. Sweep the Yankees out of the ALCS and then play us in the World Series, and then we just beat the ever loving shit out of them. And everybody's like, Phillies had a Phillies had the easiest ride in the World Series, blah blah blah. And we're like, What are you supposed to do? Not play teams that already lost, like you can do. Yeah, we're like, No, 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 we're gonna play the Yankees instead, even though they got even though they got beat by the Tigers. Yeah, when, sorry, when, Tigers. <laughs> John Middleton said, Get me my fucking trophy back. He's not. Oh, just beat better teams. He's like, No, no, beat the teams. Yeah, you know, what are you supposed to do? You'd be like, no, no, no. Actually, we don't want to play anymore this year. The better team lost. Anyway, uh, yeah, games one and two of the NLDS. Citizens Bank Park, 408 Eastern, Saturday and Sunday. We will be coming to you next week on Monday because that is the off day before we go to um, either Milwaukee or New York to play games three well, and we four won't. of that series. Oh, yeah, I guess we would go there. Well, it's just game three. Game four is not going to be necessary because we're going to sweep them. But Facts. we're going to be talking to you on Monday. Bruce. So, uh, Phillies predictions for this weekend. Wheeler's pitching game one, Nolo's pitching game two. Is that for sure? Is that confirmed? I imagine it would yeah, be in the Ranger they're game They're definitely three. doing that. There were talks. Nola there pitched was... the last game of the season, right? Who? It was Nola. Yeah, but yeah. obviously he's had a week now. There was talk. Yeah, I think they'll both be on like six or seven days rest, but that's, not, that's only like a couple extra days. There was talk that Christopher Sanchez should maybe pitch game two because his, like, home ERA is so drastically better than his road ERA. What do you guys think about that? I don't have a problem with it, but I also worry if uh, Noel is one of the, like, as good as he's been, I do not ever trust him and trust his mentality to not 
He's had a good season. Just fall apart, though. He still has had games where he does his True. thing, where he falls apart. And I could totally see it being like, well, but I've been here for 10 years, and I don't get a pitch at home. Like, I, I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not against it, because Sanchez has been great. He's also kind of been a little iffy towards the end of the year, but overall has been great. Uh, they, he's been less if, if, iffy than Ranger Suarez. Yes, he has. Should he pitch game three? Well... I don't know. They could also just have Ranger on a short leash and say, Sanchez, you go in if Ranger's fucking up. Because I did see something the other day that the last three seasons, Ranger's last start, he gave up six runs in all of them. And then each post, the last two postseasons, he's had like a one ERA. So he he definitely has that like, oh, yeah, I'm Joe Cool. I'm going to fucking just bear down because I'm oh, Ranger yeah. Suarez. Yeah, Ranger and Nola are two are interesting in two different ways. Ranger, you know, injuries aside, they both have been very, very good in the postseason. And I personally would just err on the side of let's ride that um, because even if that doesn't work out in a game four, if you, if it comes to it, Sanchez is really good, and we're already talking about it, putting him in game two because of how good he's been. So a Sanchez in game four is a huge advantage over another team's four. So if it even gets there, that's a big advantage. And and if it if it comes to a game of three like John was saying and and you know it's a close game and you want to have a short leash for Ranger you can still use you can still use Sanchez in that and you'd be saving the bullpen. Um, and Turnbull's I back. personally would side with Nola in game True, two though because back. his playoff numbers are just crazy. I I hear what people are saying about Sanchez. His home his home performance is like that much better than his away performance. That's why people are even talking about starting him in game two. But I still think Nola is the better pitcher, and I think that. You want to stack as many advantages as you can. It's better to be 2-0 than 1-1 going to game and three. And it's better to sure. be, you know, we've got yep. the home field advantage for games one and two. Put the best pitchers in games one and two. And that's Wheeler and Nola, period. You know what I would love is if the Phillies didn't even make us worry and just scored runs and didn't do this shit where it's like a Schwarber leadoff home run and then seven innings, no hits. It's like, I what don't want to talk about that. I hate that kind of shit so much. You talk. need, you need like a, like a, you need a gem from like Wheeler and Nola to win a game. We don't need that. No, I don't want they, that. Very much do that. Wheeler and Nola. Yeah. But throw the gem tack on some runs, but win eight, nothing. You know what I could see happening yeah. is we win games one and two, and then we're going on the road for game three. And topper says, we're not even giving these guys a chance to see game four or game five. Let's put Sanchez in for game three and see how he does and just try and end it. Because he, he's been pitching better of late than Suarez has. And as much as I love Ranger, you don't want Ranger coming in there in game three and giving up five or six earned runs. And then it's like, shit, now we got to play game four. What if we lose game four? Now we got game five. That would be at home, but still, you don't want right. that. And, you know, if you win in three, then you get more time off. You you also just want to keep all the pressure on the on Mets them. or Brewers, yeah, yep. like because yeah. it's like oh shit we're down two zero yeah we get to play at home but we have to win today or else it's goodbye and then the same thing for them the next day yeah. if we but I agree yeah. just sweep them we talk a lot I mean last week on the pod we talked about the insane home field advantage not just at Citizen Bank Park but in the evening we've won. 71% of our home evening games. We've won 80% of our games in pinstripes. We've Good. all been there. All three of us have been <laughs> to Red October games. I think the pinstripes is more, you know, not really reliable. I know it's more no, just Joe, representative it's, that's, of home, that's home games. That's the most reliable but stat night game, of all I think, time. As, a, as like the players go, does have like a real no. uh, representation of success. <laughs> I disagree. No Mark Garcia Parra wouldn't really change his underwear during the playoffs. <laughs> and how the many entire playoffs he wear the same pair of underwear without many, washing it. And how many rings did he win? Zero. <laughs> Uh, quickly good, back to he your was. point, though, JT, about Game 3 and using Sanchez to close out a series. If it does come to that, I think th the time to do it would be in a five-game series in the DS. Um, I don't think they do something in, like that in, in the NLCS unless Thompson isn't confident in uh, Suarez. Yeah, it's about what they're uh, seeing from him, you know, and how he's feeling and everything. But I'm like, if yeah. we win Games 1 and, and Suarez 2... And Suarez is good out of the bullpen, too. And you put the best pitcher in, in playoffs, to so close it out in would be Would be good out of the bullpen if we decide to do that. It would also be a huge boon, like I mentioned, Turnbull coming back, just to have one more yeah. arm you can rely on out of the bullpen uh, so you don't have to overtax Hoffman and Strom and Alvarado. Obviously, those guys have, yeah. for the most part, all been really, really stellar. But yep. Being able to be like, yeah, we can throw Turnbull in there for two innings rather than having to stretch Strom out for the two innings or whatever it may be. It's nice to have yeah. that, and then you don't have to worry about, oh, fuck, I don't even know. So Luis Ruiz, is that his name? 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, Estevez is good too. I forgot about him, but you know what I mean? It's like some um, of these guys. Estevez, yeah. thank Sorry. you. Some of these guys I don't want to see. Respect our Dragon Ball Z King. You're right. Some of these guys I do not want to see in the playoffs, even if they're on the roster. It's like a, yeah. from a, from two years ago, like Connor Brogdon getting in the game. No, thank you. No, thank oh. you. Jeff Hoffman's been There's good. There's a guy we just sent to the moon after we get, <laughs> released him. <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to I just want to give you guys, just picture this for me. Like, we all remember, what was it, 07, Brad Lidge throwing the... Brett throwing, Myers. No, it was Brett Myers throwing the, Myers the glove to the moon yeah. when we won that the World Series. Literally, that glove never came down. No. <laughs> it's still, yeah, floating World up there. World Series was Lidge. <laughs> World Series, that was Lidge. <laughs> that glove is in orbit. That was Lidge on his knees with Chooch running at him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Picture this. It's game five of the World Series. Mm. It's bottom of the ninth inning. This is triggering for both Close out game for the Phillies. Who comes in? Estevez. Oh. He throws a nasty curveball. Gets Aaron Judge to chase for the final out. The Phillies win the World Series. And what does Estevez do? That fucking Dragon Ball Z shit. Kamehameha. And that's the iconic <laughs> image that everybody associates with that World Series for the end of time, the Dragon Ball Z thing. How fucking cool would that be? <laughs> that that would that be would awesome. Rock. He's just like Psh. even even from a personal point point for him beyond like I just won the World Series. Imagine being him you're like, "Fuck, I'm on the Angels." And then they're like, yeah, you're going to Philadelphia. He's like, yeah! Oh, I have a shot to win? That's weird. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Who wins the ALCS? Yeah, it's been a very up and down year for uh, Estevez, but right now it's big up. What are our AL predictions? Who wins I the I imagine pennant? the betting favorites are the Yankees. I would, well, yeah, I would sure. like the Tigers to do it, but I, I would imagine the Yankees are betting favorites, so probably them. Oh. Well, you know, the Rangers did it last year, so I, I don't know. I mean, the Tigers are probably pretty far down the list in, in Vegas, but they have a good shot. The Yankees that. were really good but last yeah, the year. the Yankees are going to be the betting favorite. And lost. The Yankees were really good two years ago. Yeah. And lost. Any, anything can happen. Aaron I mean, Judge. We were really good last year and lost. Aaron Judge has zero World Series at-bats. Just saying. Hmm. Hmm. I think the uh, Royals win the AL, just for shits and giggles. They haven't. They have been pretty hot down the stretch, too, and fuck it. I just... Actually, you know what? Fuck Kansas City. You guys don't deserve any more happiness. <laughs> yeah, you've had the Chiefs. Yeah, I'm gonna. You know what? Yeah, I'm Paul putting my Rudd, money on the Tigers. Give me the Tigers. Fuck it. Um. Anyway, Red October. Happy Red October, everybody. This is the moment that we've been looking for all summer, and also the amount of anxiety that I'm prepared to deal with over the next mm. month is unreal. I can already feel it. I can feel it building. The anticipation. You should. This is when yeah, we stake our entire in. mental health on a bunch yep. of jamokes in pinstripes in South Philadelphia. Yeah, well, thank God Schwarber's one of them. Talking about the fighters! And Nick Castellanos, we who didn't miss a fucking like... game all year, and is playing well. Good for him. Nicky Blacks! Do we think the folks at uh, BetterHelp get a lot more subscriptions during the month of October? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm ready to fire up that BetterHelp. You BetterHelp know promo code PVE. You can go to therapy. Or you can fill up a 32-ounce can of uh, Yingling with hot <laughs> piss at a World Series game. In the stands. For our new listeners, let's tell that story one more time, JT. So Joe here and I were at Game 5 of the 2022 World Series. Um, and we decided to buy tickets to Game tickets. 5 because after we split the first two with Houston, we were saying, oh, we're winning in five, obviously. We're not going to lose at home. So... Obviously, it's game five. We won game three. They won game four. 2-2 two, two series. Last game at home. Really need the W. That, of course, game four was when we got no hit. And game five was the game where Kyle Schwarber hit a leadoff home run, and that's the only run the Phillies scored in that game. It must have been the seventh inning or the eighth inning. It was coming down yeah. to it. It was coming down yeah, to it. It. Was a, it was an inning where you could not leave your seat. There was. I think we had a man on second base. We had somebody in scoring position, and I needed to piss like a racehorse. And I was already drunk, and I had an empty yingling can in front of me, one of those big boys, a 32-ouncer. The tall boy. And I just, it wasn't just a tall boy. Tall boys are 16-ounce. This is the, the big 32-ounce, like, cannons they sell at the ballpark. Mm. And I just, you know, I just looked around a little bit, and I just... This guy, by the way, is sitting on the end of the aisle with security like five feet behind I him. I was very but, subtle you know, about it. Baseball jerseys well, you have that I little dip in the, the front. I the zipper. <laughs> I poked just the tip of it out and just put it right, right up he, to the can. You know, I was just kind of looking around like I was watching the game. No big deal. Yeah, he's lucky it fits in the can hole <laughs> without cutting him. It does not fit in the can hole. 
that's I dispute that. <laughs> but it is I am lucky I did not cut. <laughs> Look, if, this is the lead in. What I will this say is the lead into the episode. Right. If here. somebody hit a huge home run, I absolutely would have sliced the tip of my dick off on a fucking Yingling can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe, take me to the yard. <laughs> yeah, but we would have won the World Series if we won that game, so it's fine. <laughs> That would have been a story. Holy shit. And ever since that day, we uh, we now refer to those size beers at the ballpark to uh, uh, as um, beers, but they also double as urinals. It doubles as a urinal. Anyway, I filled that fucker all the way to the top. And nobody Literally would to have the top. Noticed. He had to like turn it around in the cup holder for it to not yeah. spill out yeah. so that the lip was on the top side. Yeah, because it would have spilled. <laughs> nobody would have noticed, Joe, unless you were like, are you pissing in a beer can? Your fucking dumbass started drawing I mean, attention to it. You did not give me like, a warning for what you were doing. Don't say anything. My dick is out. hundred dollars to be at that game, and if we had got kicked out because you were an asshole, I would have been very. We mad. paid twelve hundred dollars for those tickets. I should be able to piss on the guy next to me. God damn it! <laughs> well, I was the guy I next to you. So that's not going to happen. For twelve hundred dollars a seat. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Anyway, what a time. The two things I remember most from that game are well, three things. I remember the Schwarber homer to start. I remember pissing in the can. And then I remember the entire trip home. Joe, you didn't say a fucking word. I yeah. was singing, I'm going to kill my yeah. fucking self. <laughs> I have the video. And Joe, you're just like, you're cold. As yeah, I'm, Im- I'm imploding. Like, I'm trying, to dis- I'm trying to dissociate, but like, I'm literally imploding. Joe went home, ate 45 Elios and... Killed, cried himself to sleep. <laughs> no, John, John, the Elio's days were over in college, man. All right, let's move on. Let's cover one more baseball, one more piece of news here in baseball. <sighs> Pete Rose died. The guy. The guy, Pete Rose. He is a guy. He is a man. He is uh, the MLB all-time hits leader. He is a World Series champion. He's an all-time great Philly. He's also... Uh, kind of a scumbag. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. The question here is, now that he's dead, wouldn't it be the greatest bit of all time to finally let him into the Hall of Fame? Well, it was a lifetime Strictly ban. Strictly speaking, he got a lifetime ban and his right. life is lifetime over, ban. so you could do it. Could They could, they certainly could. But, but I think our they? question is, should it happen? He should be in the Hall of Fame because it is a museum to the sport of baseball, and you cannot tell the story of professional baseball without Pete Rose and those Reds teams or that 80s Philly team or any of his records. But it won't happen because when he was alive, all he ever did was make things harder for himself. He never, ever, ever made it easy for them to be like, all right, Pete, mm-hmm. we'll bring you back. And anytime they tried, he would go ahead and do something stupid again. Yeah, it would fuck it all up. Remember, when every year, once every year, they have all the they have the series where they have all the the old guys come back. Pete Rose would always be in the booth with Cruck and and T Mac, just like being a dingus. Well, they were going to put him on the Phillies Wall of Fame, and then that's when him fucking the fourteen year old thing came out, and the Phillies took it back. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, he was starting to be more recognized around baseball. The Reds retired his number and, all. like, it was being more okay to allow Pete back in. And then more shit comes up and Pete never, ever can just... Shut the fuck up. Yeah, shut the fuck up and be smart. So he just made it harder for himself. Yeah. And also, like, in that situation, the reason why that, that, you know, him fucking a 14-year-old came back up... Allegedly. You have to be ready for that question. And he clearly wasn't. So like and that's on him, like you were saying. All these he keeps getting in his own way. I think that Pete Rose ever being media ready is not exactly, you know, something that ever could have happened. Like he was from a certain generation where it was like, "What? Fuck you! You don't know what you're talking about." Yeah, well, I that mean, generation's the quote, the gone, quote Pete. from that like response is pretty insane. It, it essentially boils down to like, "You weren't born yet, so you shouldn't speak on something you yeah, don't know ridiculous. about." Yeah, that's ridiculous. As if like. History teachers like that matters. don't do that every fucking day. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, like oh, I no. didn't personally meet Napoleon Bonaparte, so I can't say yeah. anything about. Him. <laughs> uh, I wasn't I alive for Hitler, so George I guess Washington. I can't say he's a bad guy. Didn't like, meet him. What? I've never met him in my life. Do you guys know which actor's <laughs> father banned Pete Rose from baseball permanently, and then died like three days later? No. Joe, do you know? No. Foster. One, one Bartlett Giamatti, Paul's dad. Was the commissioner? Oh, of yeah. Was the commissioner of baseball banned Pete for life? And I think within a week he died of a heart attack. Fuck yeah. 
<laughs> so Paul Giamatti's dad Fuck used yeah. to be the baseball commissioner. <laughs> That's what? fucking awesome. <laughs> that makes Paul Giamatti even cooler. <laughs> Joe, should Pete Rose be in the Hall of Fame? No. Why not? Be specific. I agree with what Breland, a friend of the pod, Breland Moore on Fox 29, um, on the Fantastic Sports Show kind of alliterated the point uh, that, yes, there are a ton of people in any sports hall of fame that we know now are unsavory people to represent the game. Um, and we can't do anything about that now except strip them from the hall of fame, which is pretty unpopular to do at this, at this point, but to do it now with the knowledge of who he was as a person, I mean, just to go over it, like he, he on record said that he thought the girl was 16, which yes, in Ohio is the age of consent. Or was The fact then, of the matter was, is, she was 14, and she's still a minor, which makes him a fucking creep. And so if you put this guy in the Hall of Fame with that knowledge, you're essentially condoning the behavior. So that's, mm. to me, why he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Now, I get what you guys are saying in terms of, like, telling the story of baseball. Yes, he, he should be involved in that conversation. I think you can talk about Pete Rose's accomplishments without him being in the Hall of Fame. Well, then I don't think it's – I mean, it's just not a legitimate Hall of Fame to not have people like him and Bonds who are all-time leaders at very important statistical categories, especially a sport that statistics are so important to yeah. mean so much. I get your point, Joe. We shouldn't be uh, rewarding people for being shit people, but the Hall of Fames aren't about who you are as a person. It's about exactly what you did in your sport. It's not the stand-up guy example for being right. a good person. Like, then, the Hall then take of Fame. out Ty Cobb and take out Babe Ruth because he womanized. And like, then th where's your line? There is no line then. And it's like I mean, he touched kids. Like, there's a difference between what he did and like what Bonds. The Bonds used steroids. Like, that's not okay. I just saying. I'm not defending him. He touched he kids and he gambled on the game while he was a. No, he had a relationship player, with like, this girl who he thought was 16, but she was 14. Okay. That is not God disputed. damn it. That's so fucked. And okay. I'm not condoning that, but I'm just he saying... he admitted to all, it on the record. Just like, like OJ. It's not like for debate. OJ probably killed those people even though he was never uh, He was acquitted. Yes. So, gloves and Right. Shit, so. OJ was acquitted. He was acquitted. But, but Pete Rose on the record still, said he thought she was 16. But he OJ was convicted okay, but civilly, and he was convicted for other crimes, but he still was one of the best running backs of all time. You don't take him out of the museum that... Chronicles that it's, I agree. It's I not, agree. Here's Pete Rose's personal life growing up. Like nobody cares about that. We want to see the bat that he broke Ty Cobb's record with. Pete Rose has played the most games of anybody ever in baseball. Has the most at bats of anybody ever in baseball, and has the most hits. A record that will probably never be broken. People talk about their only like how many guys are in the three thousand club, like sixty. Yeah, the only person who got close to breaking was Ichiro, and you can he did if you count Japan. If you count Japan, but you don't. Pete Rose hit 4,200 hits. He was like, 3,000 hit club? I'm going to pass that by almost half. I'm going to like almost, I'm going to do like 150% of that almost, which is pretty sick. Yeah, and, I mean, his accomplishments are absolutely and undeniable. And let's focus like, this. So obviously there's the statutory rape thing, but the reason that Pete Rose is not in the Hall of Fame is because he gambled on the game. He gambled on the, the game. the second reason, yes. While he was, and while he was in the game, as, which as undermines the game. certain events from earlier this as, season as have shown. As he was shown, a manager of the Reds. True. Player manager. Yeah. Not even just manager. Well, yeah, also manager. as manager. He was also just manager. As certain events transpired earlier this year involving certain known criminals who shall not go <clears throat> mentioned, um, the, the, they don't care about that anymore. Sports gambling is not only legal, it is advertised during the game, like a guy will be winding up to pitch and T-Mac will be like, the live line is Phillies minus 110. It changed from before, you know. It's like, if that's the reason he's not in the Hall of Fame, then that's the reason that, that, that they're not going to do it, but they should be like, hey, yeah, gambling on the game was not a good thing, but considering now that we're all fucking whores for bet MGM and these fucking companies... Yeah, but JT, come on. Like, there is a difference between gambling on the game as a fan and gambling on the game when you're in the game. Yeah, like, it, those, it undermines the game. On the record, you're right, but he was betting on the team to win. It's not that's like he was he's, throwing games. That's what he says, and then... And, and there, he lied about it. Yeah, there have been bookies that have shown their records that show that he bet against the Reds. So, I like, I'm not... Pete, for the betting part, I get why he was banned. They gave him chances to rectify it, and he didn't when right. he was alive. He probably could have done the work in the years since... Where it's like, all he right. He just kept denying it, kept denying it, kept being an asshole. So he's just never going to get in. 
but that's but I do agree with your point to an extent that I don't ag- agree one to one that because there's betting now it doesn't it takes away from what Pete Rose did, but I do think it's a problem that it's just contradictory. All, all the sports it's, is so fucking ingrained in yeah. all this betting. It happened like that too. It happened overnight, right? And now like the NBA is going to allow you to bet in the arena and stuff. It's like this seems really kind of gross as compared to how like taboo betting used to be for sports. It was like, this is the end all be all. Now all of a sudden it's like, bet, 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 profit boost, bet, 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 bet. I, I hear you there for sure, but it's still the same amount of taboo for the players. Like players are still getting suspended. Uh, no, I know. I'm not, I'm not saying banned. they should like, be able to bet on baseball. I'm saying the proliferation yeah, no, of sure. betting in sports is a different issue, but I think it is an issue. Yes. I got you. What I'm saying is what the the issue of what Pete Rose did in terms of sports gambling, that taboo hasn't changed whether or not we're gambling on games more than we did ever before. Because he did it as a player. That's correct. Players doing that today are still getting banned and I just I agree with you, John, from a philosophical perspective. You can't have the guy who has the most and will probably always have the most hits in MLB history not in the Hall of Fame. Just like Barry Bonds. Yeah, he has that's the, most the part that sucks runs. the most about this, by the way, is that like he is maybe the poster child for like accolades specifically the poster child for like the Hall of Fame for baseball. And we can't put him in because of all these reasons. Yeah. Anyway, Pete Rose is in hell. But there is a Philly sports legend that's in heaven who never did anything wrong. Yes. No, actually, he did a lot of good things. <laughs> <laughs> Joe and I, uh, today. Joe and I technically met this individual at Obama's yes, second inauguration. Dikembe Mutombo, rest in peace. Yes, we we ran into Dikembe. He didn't talk to us really, but we did see him, and he was very large. I'm sure he is tall guy. Anyway, he died too young, brain cancer. Rest in peace, Dikembe. We love you. Did lots of great R. charity R. work. King. Sixers great. My my favorite Mutombo story. Was after they traded Matumbo, I went to a Sixers game with my dad and si- <laughs> this is the sister, best story. <laughs> sister. And there's like these old guys there. I don't know what they were doing. Yeah. Maybe they was like the retirement home, took a field trip, whatever it was. <laughs> this one dude behind us was like, where's Matumba? And then the other guy's like, who's that? He's like, where's Matumba, the big guy, Matumba? And he's like, who the hell's that? He's like, Matumba. And he just kept saying Matumba. And he's like, oh, they traded him. And yes, they did. But I just like, this guy, where's Matumba? Oh, for like a whole quarter, he just a good kept story. asking where Matumba was. That is a good story. It's not the one I thought you were going to tell. Uh, I think this one was when, was when he was in college. Oh, yeah. This is a well-known um, urban legend where he walked into yeah, a party you and tell said, it. Who, you will, know better than who I will sex I just Ma- know the line. <laughs> who will sex Matumbo? Yeah, it was who it. will sex Dikembe. He just like walks into like a frat house or sorority house. Like, yeah, it was like a frat house. It was like a party. And he like, walked in. doesn't drink, doesn't go up to anyone, and just like goes up to the like guy that greets him in the in the frat house and goes... Who will sex Dikembe? And then, like, they just he just gets a girl. Yeah, and goes he was up to her. big shit at Georgetown. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah, Georgetown. <laughs> anyway, rest in peace to one of those two individuals. There's a political ad right here with a guy from uh, Allentown. So shout really? out to JT's hometown, Allentown. These guys are from Allentown. Well, the one this guy they said was from Allentown specifically. Holy shit, that was my history teacher. No, um, <laughs> yeah, shout out Allentown, PA. All right, let's briefly talk about these Eagles. Let's keep this brief because it's the bye week and we don't have to suffer through them this, this week. This fucking sucks. We lost to the Buccaneers. Bucks are not that good, but we lost by way too many points. As Bo Wolf pointed out today, by the seventh offensive play for the Eagles, they were down 21 nothing. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you go three and out to start your first three drives and when your defense just can't stop, you know, Baker Mayfield. A nosebleed. Here's my question. Why did Saquon Barkley only get 10 touches in the game? And here's what Nick Sirianni had to say about it. He's like, well, you know, when you get behind, when you get into a, when you get into a, you know, when you go down and, you know, (laughs) game script changes. And I'm like, okay, I hear all that. Is this Nick Sirianni or Joe Biden? (laughs) I hear all that. But also, who's the best player on the offense besides Jalen Hurts? Right. And and when your other two top receivers are hurt and – you are behind the sticks all the time. Maybe give the guy with the quads the size of my stomach a uh, run with the ball. <laughs> See what he can do. Oh, wait. And then he ran it 60 yards later in the game. I think it's either Bo or Fran on the PHLI Eagles podcast who are always talking about, like, I'm not a run the ball, run the ball, run the ball guy. I'll tell you what. I fucking am. Run the ball, God damn it. Every goddamn play. Make them stop it. And when they do, then do something else. It's Saquon Barkley. Well, I... 
What I are mean, we doing? On the on the whole, I do agree. Like, run the ball. You don't need to. But when you have somebody like him yes. who has shown he's been extremely good this year, too, mm-hmm. it's not like two years ago, mediocre Saquon with the Giants. It's like, no, he's really good right now. Utilize him. And I, I get the argument that, like, you don't want to overuse him because his usage is, has been pretty high up until this point. Ten carries Just is not ball. enough. You still have, the like, the best offense. I know we've had some injuries in the offensive line, but you still have the, one of the best offensive lines in the league. Put Will Shipley in there. I don't want to see Kenny Gainwell running the ball. Put somebody else in there that can fucking run. Joe, Will Shipley. Even if it's not Barkley, if you want to spell Barkley for a couple plays, especially in that Tampa game, which was, like, not an exaggeration, 108 degrees for, like, the whole fucking game and, like, insanely humid. So, like, uh, terrible conditions to play in in terms of, like, you know, keeping a player rested but was there and lightning? ready for the whole game. But oh, run the ball. No lightning in Tampa. We know that. Yeah. Uh, no, but Will Shipley. He actually <laughs> Does started. Tampa Bay have lightning. He yeah. actually started the game, and that was his only play. One play. He was in on the first play of the game, Shipley. Yes, and that was his only play of the game. Right. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. I just don't understand why Saquon Barkley is not receiving twenty. Like, regardless of the game script, no matter what the scoreboard is, give him the ball on first down. Just hand yeah. it off to him and let him run. The number of times this season that I've seen a zone read where Jalen makes the wrong decision, and if he had handed it off to Saquon, he would have just burst through the O-line for like a six- or seven-yard gain or more. It's like, ugh. Just do that. Just do that. It's frustrating. And they did have a drive too late in the game where we've been saying this kind of not just all year this year, all year last year with the success of the Tush Push. Run it twice if you have to get the first down run it twice if you have to get the touchdown they did it in this game and it fucking worked so like nick sirianni can't fucking tell fans that are sitting at home watching the fucking game that they're wrong about things like this because like oh yeah if you start listening to the fans sooner or later you'll become one of them how about you fucking did it and it worked you want to give us credit there or no he couldn't coach himself out of a paper bag for real sirianni sucks and I think two. What would you say you do here? Yeah, for sure. Uh, two, <laughs> two things. Um, fuck, I just forgot one. One thing at least that I think. Oh, two. I remember now. That goes towards this beyond like the turnovers and the penalties and the sloppy play and not looking like they woke up to play. The quarterback doesn't like him, or at least not as his coach. He may like him, but he doesn't think he's a good coach. That's clear. When asked about in the post game press conference, when asked about their strategy and stuff, we have Jaylen our moments. Said, we have our moments. Like you, you don't talk to your coach. They give him so many easy questions. To be like, yeah, I love Nick. Me and him work great together. He doesn't. He doesn't not say that. Ever do that? And then I know he's kind of an idiot to begin with, but we see shit like with Slay going on Micah Parsons podcast and laughing, yucking while, it up, yucking Ooh. it up about CJ GJ, and then he posts on Instagram, damn, like he's all. Now you got this infighting on the team because this dipshit has to go out on Twitter and be like, I got 150 PBUs and six Pro Bowls. I'm great. It's like, shut up. You're not that player anymore. Yeah, you're Darius. <laughs> fucking yeah. loser. The fucking Micah Slay podcast reeked of the Mets Braves celebrating together after their doubleheader. A doubleheader I didn't watch that. I just it saw people tweeting sucks. about it. And I was just James like, Jones and, and Shady had, had good points about that specifically. Like, the competition side of the game is fucking gone because like all these guys decided to like they wanted to to trade jerseys after games they wanted to work out together in the off season where back in the day if you were a fucking cowboy you don't work out with no fucking eagles if you're an eagle if you and you're, 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 you would never be caught dead working out with cowboys in the off season we're going on their you would podcast. never be caught dead trading trading jerseys after a game it just wasn't done because like you don't fuck with them that's just how it is they're your rivals fuck those guys but now we're going on pod- podcasts with each other this team is a mess, and we've known that it's been a mess. John, as you mentioned, we just don't look ready to start a game. We are the only team in the NFL who has not scored a single point in the first quarter of Bad. any game this season. How are you going to win? Awful. You don't, Awful. especially when you go three and out your first. Aren't you supposed to script out the first couple drives? Aren't you supposed to? Yeah, wasn't that the like Andy first... Reid thing? You'd have the first yep. 15, 20 plays scripted out. What the hell happened to that? That's a failure Monday to Saturday. Dumb penalties. If you, can't, if you can't do anything on the first drives, you fucked up during the week. Dumb penalties. The guys don't look ready to play. And, John, and John you mentioned this before we hit record. We have lost the turnover battle 12 straight well, games. And this is Nick's thing. We teach turnovers better than everybody. This is our core values, blah, blah, blah. It's like, bro, 
You suck. You're not coaching winning football. If this period. Is, if this is what you think are your core values and all that shit, then you suck. This guy's a fucking clown. Yeah, I mean, the two the- things that Steichen was known best for when he was here. Take care of the football, always get positive yards. I don't know why both of those went out the window when he left, but that's what we need to get well, back to. Well, obviously, he's really good, and Sirianni's a bum. Um, 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 defense, we allowed 445 yards to Baker Mayfield, and like, sure, he's Bad. been good, but he's not. this is not Pat Mahomes out there. 15 total missed tackles. That's coaching. Oh, well, another coaching yep. thing was... Monday to Saturday. Like, they're show. not the one making the tackles, but... Baker was getting the ball out in under two seconds, and Fangio was like, we didn't play tight enough. That's your job. You call the defense. What are you doing? Also, fucking blitz. Put a cornerback in press coverage. We do that less than any other team, which is just not how you run a modern off- a modern defense. You know... You have to do more than just blitz in those scenarios, too, because there, there was a stat that came out about about Baker in that game. He was getting rid of the ball in, like, 1.9 seconds on average every play. So blitzing, yeah, you need to figure out how to put pressure on the quarterback, but when they're scheming to get rid of the ball quickly, you have to get you have to get to the quarterback quicker. So it's not just about, like, putting pressure. It's about, you, like, just getting the, to, the, to the quarterback quicker, and, and you can't do that if you don't have the personnel – Unless you're sending Ugh. fucking, you know, nine guys at the quarterback. So so he was so Vic was right in saying that they had to cover better early, but like that sounds more like you're blaming it on the players, which you're the fucking coach, you figure it out. The secondary can't cover, Slay is a bum, Maddox is toast. You know good news though? What? Bryce Huff got on the statue. Oh yeah, he had one solo tackle, tackle. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank God. Oh. There's another piece of good news about the defense is that uh, uh, Cooper DeGene seems to be uh, eyeing up that slot cornerback position. Yeah, put him in. Maddox is toast. I'm t- I, I like yeah. Avante Maddox. Maddox, Maddox is cooked, He's been cooked. on the team for a while. He's done. He doesn't have it anymore. He sucks. Get him off the fucking... He's done. Yeah, he's cooked. Yeah. I mean, and he's always hurt. Slay sucks. And, like, C.J. Gardner-Johnson makes these dumbass mistakes sometimes. What are you guys doing, man? I'm sorry. He's Darius until further notice. True. He thinks he can go by Slay because he's big play Slay. Darius? He hasn't made a big play in fucking 12 games. Darius? 15 He's Darius tackles. until further notice. And we're doing that on purpose because he doesn't like to be called Darius. I think yeah. he said only, he, Darius. only he only lets his mom call him that. We had a crooked yeah. number of sacks in this game. Well, now you got all of Philadelphia calling you Darius. So ch- do something to change it. We had a Josh Sweat sack, a big BG Fucking sack. Idiot. Love to see that. Those are the only two QB hits all game. So the D line's not pressuring. The secondary is not covering. We're not or running the ball. Picks. I mean, we're two and two going into the bye with a chance to get everybody healthy. Is the sky falling? Like, is it panic no, time? Because, you know. The injuries are a big part of this previous loss. Can you just chalk up that loss? Those guys you think will be back. And the next couple games are kind. I'm not, you know, we're two and two now, so we have to be realistic. They're not gimmies, but the first game out of the bye is the Browns, who are one and three. That's maybe a get right game. And then we have a couple of games after that that are very winnable games. If we can't sack Deshaun Watson like five or six times, then we're it's over. The defense yeah, I, sucks. I need to see Deshaun buried in the ground. I need to beat the Browns. No, we need to destroy the Browns. Sorry, Jasper, but your yeah, team it sucks. Needs, it does need to be a statement game for us. And we'll talk about that next week. But I guess, so, and they've been talking about this on the PHLY Eagles podcast. Shout out ZB and Bo and Fran and Vinny and all those guys. The expectation going into this season and the last couple seasons for the Eagles has been Super Bowl. It's been, we can be one of the best teams in the league. We can be... We can be in the Super Bowl because we saw it. So should we like, is it time to adjust expectations for this season? Or is there still a lot of time left? We can get things right, get into the playoffs, anything can happen. What do we think? I think it's, uh, I mean, it depends obviously on the Cowboys and if Jaden Daniels is really this good. It's a maybe division title, but more likely wild card one and done sort of thing. It's not a Super Bowl team right now, and a lot of that is the coach. I agree. And I've said this before. uh, I think big picture, uh, I agree with what John's saying. At some point, 
if it doesn't happen in these next couple weeks with with our wide receivers back and with Lane Johnson back in the lineup, at some point we will have to have the discussion: Is Jalen Hurts the guy we think he is? I don't think because that, that needs he to has be a been discussion. fucking terrible in the last like ten games. He's been turning it over. He hasn't been fucking terrible. Well, that's that's There's pretty a bad. There's he, a I mean, difference. His turnover I think, numbers are like, fucking last terrible. week. I think if you take his two turnovers away, he played a great game. We, we say that all the time. How many which points is becoming a problem? Right. Well, but you can't be the most turnover prone QB in the league. Obviously, that's not good. Braves well, lost. Listen, if you're the if you're the quarterback, you're the you're the guy that has the biggest impact on the on the football field in terms of wins and losses. He yeah, wasn't he giving us a chance to win snap, that game yeah. with the turnovers. No, he he can't. He, he's looked like Carson with some of these fumbles in the pocket and stuff. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, what I'm not saying that the conversation happens now. I'm saying at some point this season, if this doesn't change, we have to have that conversation. I don't agree. I think that the coach is a big problem, and I think the fact that the defensive personnel sucks is a big problem. And yeah, I mean the that's eighty five percent of it. The 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 D line is so bad, and it hasn't worked obviously. And Hoff is just like brutal. Yep. I can't believe it. Braves lost. R.I.P. Braves. You got one more game to lose. Lol barbs. Yeah, we'll talk more about this team. I think next week we could talk more about the Eagles and like really try and sort of dissect some of what's ailing this team. But I think that Nick Sirianni is um he puts a, a he's ceiling on, he's on, on he's on thin ice too. He he's put a he's put a ceiling on this team's success. We literally yep. saw it in the Super Bowl. That was the best we're ever going to do with Nick Sirianni as our coach. Yeah, him turtling. He's turtling in the Super Bowl. Punting on fourth and two at midfield. Great job, pal. Anyway. Two and yeah. two. Could be worse. Yeah, Shrug. Could, could Red be, October. Could, could be worse. better. Could have won that Falcons game. Could be, but, you know, they didn't, so they shouldn't be. Well, this is even better for Red October because now I have not I don't have any hope in the Eagles and I've placed all of my hope on the Philadelphia Phillies. Ja, um let's look around the league here really quick. Some other week 4 games. Cowboys beat the Giants, Falcons beat the Saints, Bears beat the Rams, Vikings are 4-0, beat the Packers in a close game. Dude, Darnold is finally like breaking out at 26, which is hilarious cuz he's been in the league for so long. Yeah. But like it's I said be this comeback to you, player of the year or most improved, whichever is a thing come back probably joe i've said this to you yeah. i said this to you before we recorded um it's been a weird start to the nfl year like the vikings are the best team in the nfc are i think we, is that going to be are they going to be there are they going to be the best team in the nfc at the end of the year i don't think so so i think i think part of it is a lot of teams aren't playing at all in the preseason and the shortened preseason is part of that reason and so these yep. first four weeks of the season i have been sloppy this has been the preseason. September is just preseason football, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty pretty bad shit for a lot of these games. Colts beat the Steelers. Steelers finally lost a game. Broncos beat the Jets. That was one of the worst games at all time. Talk about sloppy bullshit. They threw for 65 yeah. yards and won. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at halftime, Bo Nix had seven pass completions for negative seven <laughs> passing yards. Yeah. How does that even happen? <laughs> Your guy, Bo Nix. No interceptions. <laughs> Two straight weeks of no INTs. <laughs> He's getting there, guys. I'm telling Meanwhile, you. Meanwhile, ayahuasca boy fucking sucks. Wait, no, but if you're the Jets and you have Aaron Rodgers and Sauce Gardner and Brees Hall. And Garrett Wilson. How are you losing to the Broncos who only put up 65 yards of offense? Terrible. How does that even happen? Jets doing Jets things. Bengals finally won a game. All it took was playing the Panthers. They still let the Panthers score 24 points. Red Rifle. Red Rifle. Hey, don't count out those Panthers just yet. They got Chuba Hubbard. They got <laughs> they got Deontay Johnson. They're coming. Texans beat the Jags. Jags are 0-4, man. You got to feel Ch for Doug. Doug's gone, too. You think he's going to get fired midseason? Yeah. yeah. It's got to keep losing, yeah. He certainly could. Commanders beat the Cardinals 42-14. They're good so far. Put some respect on Jaden Daniels' name, man. That guy looks he looks fucking good. Raiders beat the Browns. Lol Browns. Browns, Lowell Browns. Lowell Browns would have had a chance Browns. to tie it and force to overtime. Oh, wait, their kicker missed the extra point before that. <laughs> the so most Browns way four. to lose. Yeah, they were down four <laughs> instead of down three, and then they had to go for the touchdown. Woof. And Deshaun got sacked. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Yeah, watching Man. a Browns game with Jasper is a really special experience because he's yelling and yelling and yelling, and then he's just like, 
He's like, oh, <laughs> me, bro, 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 bro. And it's like, dude, you're the Browns. Yeah, aren't you used to this by now? <laughs> what are you talking about? I guess not. No. I guess not. No. Yeah, anyway. Always optimistic. I took Raiders minus two. They covered. Thank you for paying me yet more money, Bra- uh, Jasper, regarding the Browns. Thank you. The Raiders uh, might trade Devontae Adams. He says he wants out. Apparently, they're making calls. It makes sense. The Raiders are dog shit, and Devontae Adams is still good. So, hopefully, he goes somewhere good. Not too good, though. Like, not Chiefs. Chiefs beat the Chargers 17-10. Chargers were up 10-0 in this game, then lost. The most yeah, Charger thing they, of all time. They scored all 10 in the first quarter and didn't score again. Yep. Because they're so- fucking losers. Sounds like the Chargers. Yeah. And then Mahomes fucking eviscerated Rasheed Rice's knee. Yeah. yeah, that sucks. See that replay? Sucks. As somebody who recently went through ACL surgery, don't wish that on anybody. Not fun. Ravens beat the Bills. Sunday night football, Bills. Stinker. Big time stinker. I mean. Yeah. Wasn't. Bad. Wasn't Pretty good. Pretty bad. Ravens? Ravens? D-Rack Henry looks like. D. Rack Henry. Oh, 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 yeah, that big run, that, what, 87-yard run he exactly. had to start the game? He, I saw he's on pace for 2,000 yards again, and he'd be the first guy to do it since he did it. Jesus Christ. He might be the first ageless running back since Adrian Peterson. Titans beat the Dolphins. This shows you how bad the Dolphins well, are. They allowed the Titans and their backup quarterback to beat him, but did, I guess maybe that's an improvement for the Titans. Did you watch any of that game? It was so bad. No, I didn't watch any it of them. It was so terrible. bad. And all I needed was... I, I had a four leg parlay that was gonna hit if A Chan scored. He got to the goal line twice. Oh, I had the same shit. Oh, <laughs> mine then, was gonna pay out like a grand. And then Huntley ran it in. That sucks. Yeah, that sucked. Lions beat the Seahawks. That was a fun game in the second half. First loss sure for my was. guy Gino. It's all right. Goff Goff went up. Had a perfect passing. Game. Eighteen, went, for, 18 18 for eighteen and caught a touchdown. Yeah. I'm in Ross Crazy St. Brown. Game for Goff. One for one for seven yards and a tutty in the air. <laughs> All right, Joe, are you ready for your hockey minute? Sure. I mean, I don't even probably honestly won't even need a minute. The uh, Flyers uh, played some preseason games. Matt Vemichkov looked especially good in one of the games. He scored two goals, uh, one in regulation. <laughs> JT, show me the timer right now. Uh, one in regulation. He was just parked on a post and uh, – um, uh, just received a really good pass from uh, I think it was I forget his name doesn't matter. Uh, Mitchkov scored a goal in regulation. His overtime goal was especially impressive. Uh, three on three for Mitchkov coming from the KHL where the ice is wider. He's used to having a lot more space. Konechny hits him on a uh, long pass uh, across center ice. Mitchkov. Played the goalie and the defender. Defender had to play the pass uh, with Konechny coming up. Mitchkov snipes an overtime winner, and the Flyers uh, win in overtime. It was awesome. Uh, Mitchkov is the real fucking deal. Uh, and in other news, we have four seconds left. <laughs> Alexei Kolasov. Oh, no, that's it. No, his, that's it, ladies and gentemen. Can I get a, can I get a hockey 15 ended seconds? Ended his embargo on the Flyers. Uh, did come over and played some time in the in the preseason game yesterday. Looked pretty good. Nope. Um, this is eating into your time could be, next week. Could be on the roster to start the season. I don't think more I'm going to need a minute. It a minute and a half. Folks, until the Flyers are worth talking about for more than 60 seconds, that's all you're going to get. Um, Come on. Mitchkov is really fucking good. I you guys turned no, on that we, overtime we saw, game the second it, before he scored yeah, the goal. Yeah, I was just about to say that, Joe. Let me fucking talk. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize the game was being broadcast on national TV, so I saw it was on, and then I... Um, Put it on, and it was like literally the thirty seconds in overtime before they. Yeah, scored. you and I were. The, yeah, we were watching. Yeah, we were it. hanging out, and then you're like, after that happened, you're like, that's the perfect amount of hockey. See the Flyers win. That's it. <laughs> that's exactly as much hockey. Speaking as I of the watch. perfect amount of hockey, turn it I know on. The hockey minute. Our most exciting player hits the game winner in overtime. Turn it off. Like we literally had <laughs> the game on for like forty five seconds. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> we're like, oh, he won. I know. Look at that. I know the, the hockey minute's over. But speaking of the perfect amount of hockey, there are rumors for Amazon. I think it is to do a Whoa. Uh, NFL Red Zone style mm. program for the NHL Ooh. to to make it more you know digestible okay. and like make the make it just like the big plays that are happening throughout the days i'd i'd be into that potentially poor potentially uh temple lost to army our alma mater temple they're back to their old ways of losing at least they have a dub at least they have a w in the column uh sixers nba media day guys are losing weight guys are looking good joel Embiid's being joel Embiid. tyrese maxi looks big and strong regular season starts october 22nd 
And we will be talking more about that team and their disappointments <laughs> closer to that date. Guys, do we Don't have anything do else? They haven't done anything for us yet. Do we have anything else to say here before we close out the pod? Uh, Happy to be a part of, uh, newly a part of Heat Ratio Sports. Yep. We're going to ratio the heat out of this shit. We're going to ratio the heat out of this shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, but we have the heat. Thanks for thanks for having us. Tone, big tone. We need to get Ving Rames to say that for us. We have the heat. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I got is he on cameo? I bet he is. I, with that Arby's money, I don't think he's on cameo. You don't think so? <laughs> we'll look into that. Arby's and Mission Impossible money, he's not on cameo. We'll look into that. Anyway, uh there's be lots of exciting Could stuff that's H. gonna come. To do it. This is this is the exciting time uh for this podcast. We've got Postseason baseball, we've got the Eagles, we've got Football the Sixers starting swing. soon. Man, it's going to be an exciting time. We're going to come back to you next Monday in between games two and three of the NLDS. The Phillies hopefully will be up 2-0 in that series, and uh, we'll be riding high and not even thinking about that football team that does just bad and other things. Yeah, so. well, if anything, we at least don't have to suffer next week through them. Oh, you know what? One more thing. Happy 100th birthday to former president Jimmy Carter, you he old bastard. He's been in hospice <laughs> for it. more than a year. I want him to outlive Joe Biden. For, he made it for one more uh, Barves postseason crash. Congrats. Yeah, what if he's holding on to see this Braves playoff season run or playoff run, and then he's like, <laughs> fuck. The Braves and lose then he tomorrow, dies he the dies. Day they're eliminated. <laughs> Hammer Casty Homers. Actually, that should be, make him throw out the first pitch. That'd be perfect. Casty Homer. He can't move. He's like a vegetable, but they yeah, should when, make him throw out the first Jimmy, pitch. Jimmy Carter better die either the day before or before a Phillies game starts so we can hammer those Casty bets. We're not yes. wishing anyone to die. No, I don't wish him to die, but he's 100 and he's going to die. <laughs> yeah, like we all are. He's at Ben in hospice. In like, fairness, been John, expecting we've been saying die. that for 10 years now. <laughs> What's the line from Blade Runner? It's a shame she's going to die. But then again, it's too bad she won't live. But then again, who does? <laughs> Fellow Temple alum Tim Heidecker. Uh, big announcement. Oh, he made his big announcement. Jimmy Carter update: no change in status. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, there's a change in status. He's Tim the earlier digits, in the day man. said big announcement at 11 p.m. Eastern. He's a triple <laughs> digit it's guy. Same. It's the same status he shares every day. <laughs> yeah, and I just checked, and he tweeted it 28 seconds ago. No change in status. Let's go. All right, Philly versus everybody. We're going to come at you next week. Go Phils. Go Phils. Excited for all the new listeners. Bye.